And if it all goes as planned, Jeff Bezos is going to be soaring into space tomorrow with his company Blue Origins. First manned launch. This one is going to look a little different than what we saw with billionaire Richard Branson. For one, it's going to be a rocket ship and it will be entirely automated. So what does all this mean? Well, we are so honored to be joined by a former former NASA astronaut, Mike Massimo. Thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much, and the last name's Massimino, but thanks for having me. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, Mike, let's talk to you a little bit about the perfect person for us to talk to about this. I understand that you have a team record for the number of hours spacewalking in a single space shuttle mission, and that you were actually the first person to tweet from space. So I gotta know, what did that tweet say? Uh, well, I didn't think very much about it, Anita, uh, and uh, I probably should have put more thought into it, but it just out of the heart, it came that uh, launch was awesome. This is right, it was on launch day, so I wrote that launch was awesome, feeling great, enjoying the views, and the adventure of a lifetime has begun. So there it is, first tweet from space. Well, that's funny. 12 years ago, over 12 even, years ago. Now. You didn't even think that it was going to be history, but it is historic, and you're tweeting it out like, oh, I should have given it a little is. more thought about yeah. that. That was really cool. Okay, well, let's talk about <laughs> what we can expect tomorrow. Let's start, first of all, with the two differences I referred to at the beginning. The design of the rocket, it's different, and this mission is going to be automated. So tell us what that means and what we're going to see. So uh, if you compare it to what uh, Richard Branson did uh, a little over a week ago, he had a, a, a mothership and a spaceship that took off from a runway, dropped the spaceship at, at a high altitude, and that went the rest of the distance into space and then came back and landed on a runway. Jeff Bezos' spaceship, and so you had pilots controlling that, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the, the spacecraft to land it. Jeff Bezos' uh, uh, the Blue Origin New Shepard spacecraft is totally automated. There's no pilots on board. So the launch sequence, the separation from the launch vehicle, the launch vehicle comes back and will land very close to the launch site. Uh, the, the spaceship will then go to space, get about uh, four minutes in space, similar to what, same amount of time pretty much that uh, Rich, Richard Branson had. But then that, uh, sp the spacecraft will come back and land with a parachute to be used again. But the major difference in my mind is that it's a fully automated launch with, uh, with the Blue Origin Jeff Bezos model that we'll be seeing uh, tomorrow, hopefully. Wow, if, if that was you going up there, uh, how would you feel if somebody else was controlling everything? Would that be unsettling for you? I mean, what do you think? Well, it's not really, so, it's, it's, uh, it's automated. So it's not someone else, it's, it's, uh, it's an automatic sequence and it's very, very um, robust. It's been tested 15 times. Uh, they've had 15 launches. They've also have an escape system that, that seems to work really well. They tested that three different times under uh, different conditions. So if there's any problem, the, the spacecraft will separate from the rocket. Uh, the, the reason to have people involved is if you need to have people involved to intervene. But since this is not coming down on a runway, since it is coming back, it's a, it's a fairly short flight, it's gonna come back with using a parachute, that uh, automation sometimes can be more reliable than, than the pe people involved. So, uh, so I, I would feel okay with it actually. And I'm sure there's gonna be some emergency procedures that they're going to need to know just in case to, to help themselves. But I think in this case, uh, I think it's going to be pretty safe. Yeah. Okay. You're somebody who spent your life training to become an astronaut and the amount of hours and the commitment that you have to do, it must have been just consuming. But then back then the government didn't seem to have the kind of interest in the space race that it had then that it does now. You know, does it, how does it make you feel to see people like Bezos and Branson, I mean, civilians, you know, albeit rich, but civilians reigniting this. Well, I, I was also a civilian. I was never a military uh, person, so I was a civilian NASA astronaut, but I was a government employee. Uh, I think it's, a, it's an interesting phase of flight, uh, space travel, uh, space flight we're, we're entering. Uh, I, I think it's great. You know, I wanted a career as an astronaut. What I got to do in space was much different than what they're going to do. Uh, and during this 11 minute flight, obviously, you know, it did take a lot of preparation, very competitive process to become a NASA astronaut. Thousands of people applying is only, that's the hardest thing about becoming a NASA astronaut is getting through the selection process. And then once you're there, there's a lot of training, years worth of training, but your missions are pretty complicated. You're, you're up there for a long period of time, in my case, a couple of weeks. Now my friends are up there right now in the space station. They have six month uh, expeditions uh, in space. So. It requires a lot more training and much, a much different background 
than what it requires to go on the ride that uh, Jeff Bezos and his crewmates are going to have tomorrow. But I think it's great. I think it opens up opportunities for lots of people. My students at Columbia flew a, an experiment on one of the Blue Origin rocket ships, uh, the same like uh, Jeff Bezos is going to go on. There was no people on board, but they were able to do a research experiment on one of the previous flights. So I think it opens up opportunities for lots of research, for exploration, and for more people to experience space travel. So I think it's absolutely great. All right, well, there's been some talk, you know, that Branson didn't really go up into outer space, that he went up 50 miles, which NASA recognizes as the boundary of space. But Blue Origin says that theirs is a true astronaut experience because they're actually going to the internationally designated boundary of space, which is 62 miles up. So in your opinion, is this just a technicality yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, the, uh, the actual boundary of space is right around there, about 52 miles or so, where it was calculated, 80-some kilometers. And I think the international standard rounded up from like 82 kilometers to 100 kilometers, a nice round number. We went from like 51 or 52 miles down to 50. But we set 50 miles as the standard. They are launching from the United States, so I think we should be using 50 miles. So either one of them... Uh, it went into space, is, the, is what I would say, and that's just a, that's just a little technicality. Well, Mike Massimino, we want to thank you so much for coming on. We are honored to be able to interview this morning. Sorry, I messed up your name there. You're certainly not Massimo Jeans. Right. Massimino, okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a you great bet. day. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Anita.